نحمده ونصلي وسلم على رسوله الكريم سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد ولقد ولقد كتبنا في الزبور من بعد ذكر ان الارض يرثها عبادي الصالحون ان في هذا لبلاغا لقوم عابدين وما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين وقال الله تعالى الرجال قوامون على النساء وقال تعالى واطيعوا الله والرسول لعلكم ترحمون وسارعوا الى مغفره من ربكم وجنه عرضها السماوات والارض اعدت للمتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاذبين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Most honorable respected elders and brothers ulama ikram hafiz ikram mothers and sisters assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh wa alaykum alhamdulillah thumma alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed as he mentions in the fifth juz of the noble quran that he has and he addresses nabiy karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam and says today i have perfected for you your religion our deen is perfect it is complete however we find that many a times we find we find these things happened at the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and even in this day and age where deen has also become quite filtered that we mix religion with culture we mix up the understanding between and underst- and we we sometimes don't even know the difference between what is religion and what is culture So if you are for example of Indian background or Pakistani background Bangladeshi Sri Lankan uh, Australian Canadian American Mexican whatever background that you may have you may find that sometimes you do certain things not because Islam has even asked you to do it or Islam may have asked you to do certain things but you do it more with cultural ideologies in mind and one of these things is with regards to a very very sacred thing and we hear it on the occasion of weddings where the hadith is mentioned uh, an nikahu min sunnati the nikah is my sunnah and we know the hadith which says in the nikah talks you hear it quite often that comp- making nikah is completing half of your iman and some people say you know what maybe you should make nikah twice and your whole iman is complete Yeah, but many a times, and those who are married will know that it's not easy to have one wife. Forget have two. Yeah, and a lot of this is because cultural ideologies are stuck in our heads. How many of us truly and correctly educate our children with regards to polygamy? And some people will say, "How can you have more than one wife? That is disgusting." But the very same person who would make such a statement. would be the very same person who has one wife and a couple of spare tires on the side if you understand what i'm saying without any strings attached without any responsibility and because we do not discuss this amongst our families that is why when it comes to this sunna aspect of the life of our master nabi akram sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam we find that it's very difficult as a matter of fact there are things that are maybe known as nafal optional mustahab preferable sometimes these are given preference over the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so one aspect of something you may say no 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 we have to do this but reality is in the sharia yeah as far as islamic law is concerned it is only an optional act it is only something that if you did it's a preferable thing to do however when it comes to a sunnah like polygamy then we say no 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 we can't do that and the reason for this is because of ignorance we don't know why we are saying no except that no no i'm not going to share my husband with someone how was it that the azwaj e mutahharat shared nabi akram sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam with other women 
And then at the same time, we also need to look at why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa had more than one wife. A lot of guys tell me, Mawlana, make do I get a second wife? Will it actually happen? No, Mawlana, I'm too scared of my first wife. And people think our wives are oppressed by us. Sadly, the reality is yes. Some women and even some men are oppressed by their spouses. Domestic violence is something which is looked at as taboo, something you don't share in the community, you don't speak about it. You speak about it and then you looked at as, hello, why are you speaking about this? Because what has happened is that Islam has taught you al-rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa And some people, you see, that's why it's important to understand the Qur'an. You have to understand Arabic to understand the Qur'an. You can't do a crash course for one month on Arabic and all of a sudden become a commentator on the Noble Qur'an. And yet you get some people, they just open up any verse and say, yeah, but see what is written in the Qur'an. If you don't understand the Qur'an, the context that it is written in, you will make so many mistakes in the Noble Qur'an and in the interpretation of the Noble Qur'an that no doubt this will bring about your downfall. Guaranteed. 100% guaranteed. So some men will translate, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى nisa That the men are more, they translate it how? Strong and more powerful over the woman. So they feel, right, I'm more powerful, I'm the strong one, I have a right to beat my wife up. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Nowhere do you find that Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hit any of his spouses, not one. If you can find such an incident, please bring it forward and then we can have a look at it. But from what I know, and I know very little, that's why I say, and this is, uh, I'm, not, I'm not just saying it out of saying it, but I'm saying, if you genuinely know that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hit one of his spouses and there was some justification in that and there was some... Uh, it was okay for him to do that, then please bring forward such stories, as long as there is authentic narrators involved in there. <clears throat> so Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has taught us this, and sometimes we find that culture has brought in something totally different. Culture has said that, you know what, the wife has to cook, the wife has to do the washing of the clothes, the wife has to clean up the house, the wife has to do this, the wife has to do that. And the husband, all he has to do is just go to work, come back and put his feet up and the, he must get a hot cup of tea as soon as he comes in. He must have fresh food and he must have this and he must have that. And sometimes you feel very sorry for our sisters. I remember many years ago when I went to India, the Mu'azdin of the area, he comes around twice at the time of Sehri. One time he comes around to wake up all the women so that they can, this was in a particular village that we were visiting, that he comes around, he wakes all the women up so that they can start cooking for sehri. And then he comes around the second time to wake everyone else of the household up. Think about it. That the woman has to get up and, and, and we ask, we said, look, why is this happening? You know, why is this guy coming around twice? You know, do they have double sehri in India? He said, no, 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 this is why it happens. So I said, then why don't the woman at night, if they're preparing for iftar, one time just prepare a meal and you can have that meal for sehri. They said, no, 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 no. The men of this uh, particular area are so, st uh, so stubborn and so difficult that they will not eat food that has been prepared a few hours ago. They want fresh, fresh food. The roti must be fresh. The, the curry or whatever it is they are eating must be fresh. Otherwise, they will not eat it. That's going to India. I have seen here and we deal with so many cases of marital problems and the amount of domestic violence that goes on against, like I said, on both sides, against the men and the woman, is horrendous. It is actually very frightening to think that a person can call themselves a Muslim and apply various different types of abuse to their spouse. And abuse doesn't just mean hitting. There's various types of abuse that there are that a person can be involved in and due to that cause a lot of difficulty and strain in a marriage. And sometimes the woman, and I, and I say the woman because <clears throat> we find this happens more often, that the woman, for example, maybe she has come from a foreign country or she's moved here to your city and She's got really no one that she can go back to. I've come across such cases where the woman knows if I have to get divorced, I'm out on the street. 
I don't have parents, I don't have siblings, I don't have relatives, maybe there's one old long lost relative that lives a couple of thousand miles away and that's about it and now the woman is taken advantage of and sometimes it works vice versa also, we've seen that also. Nowhere in Islam is such a thing approved of. I saw a video of a, uh, of a sister just a little while ago in Australia. She went to a supermarket and a woman saw her and started telling her a whole lot of nonsense because she's wearing the niqab. And then she started explaining to her that, you know what, here's my niqab, I'm wearing it because I choose to wear it. I'm not oppressed. Yeah. So many people that don't have an understanding of Islam will think, yeah, Islam is an oppressive religion. Islam says that you must beat your wife. Islam says that you must oppress your wife and your children. The reality is, many a times we are guilty of abuse and we sometimes don't even realize it. And even worse is when we realize that we are guilty of abuse, and that is towards any member of our family, and then we refuse to change. We refuse to make a change in our life for the better. Because that is now stubbornness, pride, arrogance, and absolute foolishness. Because you are saying, on the one hand, I am a Muslim. But at the same time, you're saying, I'm, I refuse to follow the teachings of Allah and His beloved Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So many instances you hear that a person is in a relationship. Yeah. I heard of one a few years back, and how that sister was being dealt with by her husband. Because he goes to work, he works odd hours. He doesn't work long hours, he works odd hours. So he gets back home in the early hours of the morning. At that time, the woman who's also been at work the whole day has come home, looked after the children, done their homework, done whatever housework, cleaned up the house, done a variety of things. This husband comes home early hours of the morning. She must then get up and immediately go and make the food. And if she never used to do it, he would beat her. He would kick her. He would hurt her. What kind of animalism is this? As a matter of fact, I think if you go to the zoo, yeah, you will find that the animals are treated with more respect and more love and more honor than sometimes people treat their spouses. Like I said, some, some people may be thinking, yeah, but you're speaking about the woman. No, I'm speaking about both sides. It could be the husband that is actually getting beaten up. And we hear of this. These are not fantasy stories. These are not fairy tales. This is reality. And as a Muslim, this should never be happening. Never be happening. I know of one, one brother. Anytime his wife used to complain to her parents, either her father or her brothers would come and beat the husband up. How is that man going to keep your daughter happy? They say there's two sides to the story and yes, it's important to know two sides of the story. And sometimes you look at them and you think to yourself, Ya Allah, what is happening to the Ummah? Why is our dua not accepted when we make Ameen to the dua, if we say Ameen? Then our dua doesn't get accepted. Why are people around the world being oppressed? Why are they going through so much of hardship and every time we make dua, we give out sadaqah, we do so many other good deeds? And yet these difficulties are not going away because of our own actions. It doesn't mean because we live here in, uh, in Leicester, in the UK, that it's not going to affect someone on the other side of the world. And like I say, going back to the point with regards to the different types of abuse that they are. You know, one is what you normally know as physical abuse, where a person is physically lashing out at their partner, their spouse, their husband or their wife. And that also different levels. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to explain regarding if you are unhappy with your wife and vice versa. They do something wrong, Islamically wrong. Against the law of the land, wrong. Then to admonish them, how will you do it? How are we supposed to do it in Islam? Are we supposed to pull off our belts and whack them? Are we supposed to use our hands? Are we supposed to punch and kick? Are we supposed to find the nearest object that we can use to cause harm? No. 
Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says that look, you work on some system where you stop talking to the other person. So that they understand. You explain, look here, this is what you've done wrong. And uh, you know, until you don't realize and understand that you have done wrong, then I'm going to be refraining from talking to you. Okay, I'm not going to sleep in the same room as you. Because a husband and wife should be joined together. Uh, sorry. Uh, you are like garments unto one another. So you should feel that, 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 oh, you slept one night apart. No, no, no. How could I do this? I'm going to make it up to her and I'm going to put, the, put it right, right now. Not wait till the morning because you know what? Death can come at any time. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned regard, regarding hitting your spouse. What did he say? Pull out a big whip? Huh? No. You could use the miswak. Hmm? Tiny little stick. A thin one. And that also not hit. But just tap lightly to say, hold on, you know what, I'm, I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy about this. And the wife can do it to the husband. If necessary. But when it comes to full-blown punches and kicks and the person ending up in hospital and constantly lying and making up stories and depriving them. Subhanallah, we hear of such stories, it's, it's so scary. One spouse is working, the other one isn't. And what happens, and generally you find that it's from the male side, that the man is not giving her any money. She's got no money at all for herself. She's not allowed to go out and work. She's got no family members to help her. All the benefits come into his account. Some women, even though they're working, their money goes into an account which they don't have access to. They're given 10 pounds a week and say, right, go live your life. This is not insaniyat. This is not Islam. This is not what the Quran and the teachings of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a harsh reality of what is actually happening, how people can be so stingy. Yet you hear that, you know what, they're taking that money and they're splashing it out on charities or they're building some home uh, in some other foreign country as their retirement home. Sometimes the family doesn't even know where that money goes. The child is wearing shoes without proper, uh, you know, the shoes are damaged. They don't have proper uniform. The uniform has gone small, but they're forced to use it. And these sort of things are all against the teachings of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Moving on from there, other forms of abuse and probably more damaging. You know, when a person gets cut, yeah, then the wound will eventually heal and the scar may go away. But emotional abuse, belittling someone, and that's so, even more so when there are family members around, that's even worse. You are useless. You don't know how to cook. Look how you look. You are both, I got married to you. You were so skinny. Now you're gone like a fat, whatever, whatever, whatever. And disgusting words, which I would rather not mention here. This is not insan. This is not Islam. This is your culture that you have brought in because you've seen it. And if you do this as a father in front of your children to your wife, or you as a mother do this to your husband, then you are teaching your children that it's okay to do this. That you are teaching them that to be abusive emotionally without even laying a finger and causing a harm and a scar on the heart, something which could never ever go away. Doing something like that is okay. That's what you're telling your children. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Noble Quran, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ who doesn't want mercy from Allah Ta'ala? Everyone wants it. Allah Ta'ala then says, if you want mercy, ila rabbikum. Then hasten towards forgiveness from your Rabb. Hasten towards turning your Rabb, turning towards your Rabb, to your Creator, and saying, look, I'm sorry for my sins. And then you will get what? You'll get your paradise that is promised for you. It has been prepared for who? Muttaqeen. Those who have taqwa. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these the qualities of such people. Alladheena yunfiquna fi sarra'i wa darra. They are those people who spend 
whether they have wealth or they don't have wealth. They have a lot or they have a little. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know the stories of him and his family members. Sometimes they had one piece of bread or some little bit of meat and someone came to them begging. They haven't eaten for days. And someone said, you know what, can you give us something to eat? They gave that away. <clears throat> it's not just about giving when you, you can't say, well, tomorrow I become a multimillionaire. I'm going to spend thousands of pounds doing this, that and the other. When you've got a ten in your pocket and it's hard for you to spend a pound. The next part, that you suppress your anger. And you know with anger what happens? If a cop pulls you over because you weren't wearing your seatbelt, you were speeding, you ran a red light, and he tells you a whole lot of nonsense, you'll shut up and keep quiet, isn't it? You won't say anything. You won't argue with him. Let your wife pull you over at home for misbehavior, Maybe she's telling you off, yeah, you don't want to get up for Fajr. You say, shut your mouth, who are you to tell me? You'll be rude and abusive. This is not Islam. This is not the meaning of throw your love where your, uh, throw your, uh, your dirt where your love lies. That we can be rude and ab uh, abusive to our, those that are depending on us. And our duty as mu'mineen and more so for the men, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى nisa. You are entrusted with your family members. You have a responsibility. The men have that responsibility over their woman folk. Yeah? To look after them, to take care of them, fulfill their rights. Today, many a times we hear the rights, the only rights that are being fulfilled is you spending money on them. Oh, I took her on holiday. I bought her the latest dress. Check how much of clothing she's got. Check how much of handbag she's got. But what is your demeanor? How is your character towards your family? Nabi Kareem sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam spoke about character. You have no wealth, you have nothing, but you have good character. You have the, one of the greatest uh, pieces of wealth that anyone can possess. And these are very, very important things. So it is very important that we learn to differentiate our religion and our cultures. In some cultures, the other day I was shocked to hear, in some cultures, the husband and wife will not sit to eat together forever. And if they have children, they are not allowed to go out. The husband and wife can't go out for a romantic meal. Hey, when last were you romantic with your spouses? When last did you buy her something nice, except when you did some musti? Hmm? Besides Valentine's Day. Hmm? Some people only wait for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, buy her something. Some people, even more clever. What they do, they buy on 15th February. Why? Save money, isn't it? Huh? Price of flowers has gone down now. Chocolates has gone down. Supermarkets need to get rid of Buy, you need to be romantic. And, and some families just have this. They say, you got children, you and the husband, want, uh, your wife want to go out as, uh, for a meal or for whatever it is? No ways, you can't do that. This is wrong. This is wrong. We should actually support. Huh? If you think about it, a husband and wife have honeymoon till the first child comes. And then after that, Honeymoon is halas, it's over. If it comes, it'll be after the children are married and the grandchildren are not coming and doing the head in. That's also abuse. Be very, very careful of our behavior and our manners and how we deal with our family members more so. Because if you are good at home, you'll be better out there. If you're bad at home, then you are defining yourself as a hypocrite. Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna bil lisanihi wa yadi. I conclude on this hadith of our Master Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A mu'min, a Muslim, a true believer in the kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is who? That other believers are safe from the harms of their tongue and their hands. Weapons of mass destruction that we all carry. And these can be weapons of mass benefit also. They can be tools of mass benefit. It depends how you utilize them. Like I said, if you can't be good at home, you can't be good anywhere else. May Allah Ta'ala preserve our marriages. Grant us true understanding of what is right and what is wrong. The ability to do that which is good. And to benefit our family members as well as the community and those even further afield, inshallah.
Also a request for dua for our dear Marhum Sayyid Iqbal who passed away five months ago. Uh, for those of you that don't know, on Wednesday evening his beloved mother passed away. What a, yesterday I was hearing from different people about what an amazing person she was. How she took people into her home and made them like her own sons. Forget what she did for her sons. Because she lost her husband when, at an age, at a very young age. And she brought her sons up. But not only that, she did more for other people. There were people that had come from foreign countries to study here. Then they got job offers here. She looked after them till they got married. When they moved into their home, she took them to the supermarket and bought out and furnished and bought whatever she could with whatever little she had. She was a teacher in which school here in Leicester? Okay. High school on top of Jamia Masjid. She was a teacher in Birmingham also. She had done so much. And subhanAllah, amazing. These good qualities you hear about, once the person has left this dunya. You know what? That's a sign of ikhlas, sincerity. When you don't do it to show the whole world, check Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, oh, check what I'm doing. Doing it with love for people. And she had that. And may Allah Ta'ala grant her and all the marhumin and maghfirat and jannatul firdaus insha'Allah. Please make dua for her also. Make dua for the family. May Allah Ta'ala grant them ease and afiat in their hearts. May Allah Ta'ala make it easy for them to deal with the loss of their mother. With those of you who have your mothers, look after your mothers. Uh, take care of them. Don't be rude and abusive towards your mothers. If you can't be respectful to your mother, how are you going to be respectful to someone's daughter who's your wife? May Allah Ta'ala grant us honor and respect in this world, qabr and akhirah. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa ma'alayna illa al-balaghul mubeen.